Hello, today I'm going to show you a premensial workup on TAVR in a patient with advanced kidney disease such that a contrast CT could not be done. As a result, a non-contrast CT was performed. Uh, so I'm going to show you how we can do a TAVR workup based on a non-contrast CT. So you can see the interface here, this patient has no contrast here, but you can still estimate the analyst and look at the aortic with anatomy. So to start with that, you click on the manual mode rather than automatic mode, and you go into this interface. The next step is to segment the aortic root manually. So start with the center line from the ascending aorta. You put a dot there, and then you try to go down towards the aortic annulus and the aortic valve. You can see the calcific aortic valve, and then you go down to the LVOT. Now there's no contrast here, so it's gonna be hard to define the LVOT. So this is more like an estimate. Once this is done, you're gonna to have to fine tune the center line. I'm gonna click confirm. And now you can see here on this particular image, how this line traces down to the LVOT and across the aortic valve. So now one of the other challenges with a non-contrast CT is that it's typically done in a diastolic phase. So the, and now may be a little bit smaller uh, than in systole. The other thing of, you can see here, there's some motion artifact potentially as well, uh, limiting the ability to actually accurately measure the analyst. But you can still get a rough estimate. And you can see that here's a tri-leaflet calcified valve. So what you do is doing similar workup as we do for the native taver with a CT angiogram. So you cut across to the left sinus of the open red circle, and now you put a dot at the base of the left sinus on the top left panel. Now this is, remember, an estimate, not uh, exactly the same uh, accurate. I'm gonna go counterclockwise to the right sinus. So you can see that's really hard to delineate. I'm just gonna put it down there and I'll show you how I can potentially make this more accurate. And then I do it for the non-sinus as well. So now I have a rough estimate of the annular plane. I'm going to straighten out the center line here. Now, what I do now is to try to fine tune this. This is where the challenging aspect comes in. So you can see, this is the sinus with the leaflet. So you have to drop it down until the sinus disappear. Now, sometimes you can see it better than uh, if the anatomy is such that the calcification extends all the way to the base of the cusp. So you can actually see where it rises. But if not, it can be a challenging estimation, you can see that here. So I think there is maybe a hint of the analysis. here. So I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm going to the next stop, which is the right side. You can see clearly I'm out of bound. It's probably more like here. And now you can see the sinuses emerges. So I'm gonna to go to the left sinus now and see again, I'm a little bit out of bound. Probably should be more like here. Can see that here. And again, just making sure you can see that here. And you can also change the gain as well to try to help, but it's definitely more challenging as you see here. So if I believe this is the right estimate, so I'm going to have now here, you can see here, it's going to be very hard to trace out the perimeter, but you, what you can do is just do a estimate and see how it delineates. Now, of course, you can also look at how the root starts to emerge because obviously the analyst is kind of right at the base of that. So again, this is an estimate, not exact. So you can see it's a perimeter of 75.4 and area is 434. And if we do a non-contrast, typically, if you are not sure about the sizing, uh, I would err the side of caution with maybe undersized with a balloon expandable valve or true size than oversized because obviously there's a risk of rupture if you oversize. And if you be perfectly safe, uh, the self-expanding valves are typically more forgiving in terms of aortic root and injury. So as long as the quantity obstruction risk is low, uh, I would in this case perhaps use a, a self-expanding valve rather than a balloon expandable valve, unless that's a compelling reason to do so. And that's been my our preference as well. 
in terms of in patients with advanced CKD, who also we have to limit the contrast during the procedure. So I'm going to save this in terms of the analyst. Now, obviously, we cannot do an LVOT assessment because there's no contrast in the LVOT. So I'll skip that. But you can now go to the aortic root to go to the STJ. You can see actually, despite being a non contrast scan, you can actually estimate the sinotubular junction right there. And you can actually spin around to rotate. As long as there's no motion artifact, you can actually estimate that. And you can see that right here, which is the sinus of salva high. And then you can actually measure the STJ with the ruler times two. You can label it as an STJ. And then come down here, you can see the left main coming out. It looks like it bifurcates early. You can right click, and then you can here go left coronary height. I mean, this is the left sinus height. You can then also split the sinus height in half to look at the sinus of salva. Now, this is harder to tell because you don't have the leaflet or commissural distance to landmark, but you can still kind of roughly estimate that. The other way you can tell is you can just go down here to see where the sin commissural are in between. So you can see that's pretty accurate. You can see it's roughly there. So it takes a little bit more finesse to fine tune, but this looks actually pretty reasonable. So you can see that here, left sinus, right sinus, and non sinus. Now, if you want to put a virtual bowel band, you can certainly do that. Uh, like I said here, this anatomy looks big. If you want to put a oversized and put a balloon expandable valve and assess the rupture risk, you can certainly do that rather than undersized with a 23 millimeter balloon expandable valve, especially given the sinuses are quite big here. But if you're not sure, I would encourage you to do TEE sizing as an alternative, complement to do this, but also to consider a MRI uh, of the aortic wood to do sizing as well. So here you can look at the 26, and then you can see here rather than doing a 20, six millimeter circle, you can do 20, you can do a 26 here, or you can do a 23. I'm just going to do 26. But of course, 23 would be very reasonable. And I may actually pick that. If given the severity of the leaf like calcium, it should be fine to the ceiling. And you can look at the echo of this LVOT to see whether the LVOT is bigger or smaller in terms of the risk of PVL. So I do the three millimeter, four millimeter cut. That's like what I do, just to look at the relative. Location of the calcium relative to the, the transcaptor valve. And then I do the same workup as I do for native cover with CT angio rather than non contrast CT. So, sonotubular junction here, sinus or salva here, left main evaluation here. Here, you can look at where the right coronary takes off with the solid green circle, corresponds to diffs. That's the right coronary height. And then take a snapshot. Now here, obviously there's no aortic segmentation. So you just look at the hockey puck view and look at the tri-leaflet valve just to see the calcium distribution. And then here again, the CRM angle is gonna be estimate. It's not exact. You can see this 26 circle is a quite a bit oversized to the Analyst, but you can also determine the aortic root angle based on the estimate of the base of the sinus. 
you can save that. You can also save this. That's the calcium landmark. Now, if you want to look at the report, let's see how it's generated. So you can see the annulus, and then I do the root measurements, just like I usually do for the analysis of proceed with contrast. And you can see the STJ, sinus for salva, left main height. And you can see the hockey puck view and then the angulation here. So you can save that as your PDF to share with your heart team. And of course, you can save it as well in the session, however you want. So this is the non-contrast workup of a native tower CT. The valve in valve would typically be similar if that's the same. And in fact, valve in valve is a little easier because you already know the surgical valve size and the type, and you can use the uh, calf to determine whether the corner obstruction risk is high or not. So I hope this is helpful to you uh, in this session, and we'll see you next time.